So I think you brought up a really cool exercise that sounds like you did. So you did both a time audit looking backwards, right, for, for 2023, and then also an energy audit. And even if you can't necessarily fully eliminate time wasters or things that are low, low value ROI on time, and if you can't fully eliminate things that are maybe energy drain, just being aware of what they are, that alone yeah. can help make that shift. So break it down. Like, what was that exercise? If people wanted to emulate it or, or try to do it themselves, like, what was that process you went through? Was it useful? Was it, or how useful was it? Like, what would you change about it if someone wanted to do the same practice? Yeah. So the, cal the calendar one, I, I think only works if you use the, ca the calendar the way that I do. I mean, my life is on my calendar down to the cities that I'm in, uh, the, the walking time from the gym back to my office in order to get, you know, on a zoom call is in there. Uh, I've just learned how to use my calendar as kind of my, my walking companion, if you will, in terms of where I spend, um, my time and making sure that if I need to do something that it makes that there's literally, you know, Tetris space for it on my calendar. So that's the first thing I'd say is just spend you track everything, basically, actually, right? actually using your calendar that way. If, if you're going to try to do this, uh, cause otherwise I don't think it works as well. Um, the second thing I did was, um, I tried to look across a, a couple different chasms. So the first was location. So literally just what cities was I in? We travel, we just looked at it. Um, again, this is a good example. Actually, we just looked at this about a month ago. Um, on average, I was, uh, in New York eight and a half days a month last year. Uh, which just for anyone listening, that's, that's where Brian lives. So only eight yeah. and a half days a month <laughs> I mean, just, just in insane. your home place. <laughs> just abso absolutely ridiculous. Um, and, and, you know, but, but again, eye opening for me, right? Like I, I hadn't really looked at that for a while because to me, it's just, yeah, I was in LA or I had to go to Boston or I flew down to DC or I went and spoke in Florida. All of a sudden I pulled up on it and it was like, well, wait a minute. You know, we want to, we want to be intentional about the work we're doing in the state of New York. How are you going to do that if you're not here that much? Right. And so that's a recalibration that we did about a month and a half ago. I canceled two trips so that I had three weeks in a row in New York um, coming up and just little things like that, that I think you can adjust off the back of these types of things. So first one was, was, was travel and kind of where I was. The second was what I think of as sort of internal versus external. So like work that I was doing with the collide team versus work that I was doing with the ecosystem. And, and oftentimes what I found was that my splits were okay, but the, the order in which I worked on them wasn't. And what I mean by that is like, I wish I had done more internal work in the beginning of the week so that my team could be better set up for success in getting the things done throughout the week that I needed them to, or that I wanted them to, and less of just kind of like, sometimes it's internal, sometimes it's external, we'll figure it out later. And so what the, the, the result of that exercise was a little more intentionality around my days of the week. So now I have a much more intentional internal Tuesday, a much more externally facing Wednesday. And so that I can sort of stay in the same mindset, if that makes sense. Like I find it hard, I find it hard to context switch between um, the work that we do. Cause sometimes you're spending time with an investor, then sometimes you're spending time with a founder. And then sometimes you're just innovating and thinking about industry trends with another GP. And then you got to talk about back office and tax with your internal team. And I just found it hard if I was doing all those things on a day. And so again, for someone that's going to kind of run this exercise, like think about which parts of your brain you're using throughout that calendar, and then see if there's ways that you can shift so that you use a similar part of the brain throughout the day, because it's like a muscle, you know, you start exercising it. If you jump off the treadmill, when you were just kind of getting started, you're not able to kind of work, work the muscle. Um, and so I found that super useful on the energy side. I looked at my recurring calendar. And so I looked at anything that I had recurring that I didn't enjoy seeing. Um, I had about 15 different recurring meetings that were set up on my calendar. And one of the things I noticed was that, um, some of those meetings had been set a while ago, but got canceled a lot. So like one out of every three of them we would have. And so then, then I just went and looked at the meeting and if it was monthly, I turned it into quarterly now. And I, and I was very intentional in reaching out to the person, Hey, I'm trying to clean up my calendar. You're one of the very few recurring meetings I have that isn't an internal recurring meeting at Collide. I noticed that this meeting is pretty hard for us to do. And so rather than, you know, doing 45 minutes once a month, 
why don't we do an intentional hour once a quarter? And I'll always ping you two weeks before it, aka my EA will ping them. Um, I'll ping you before it and just make sure that that time works. And what I found was that meeting stays now, right? It doesn't get rescheduled. It's actually there. It's super intentional. We spend the whole hour. We come in with a plan and agenda. There's much more to cover. And so like thinking about that from an energy perspective, just where I could do a little better job of, I, I think it's actually very energy depleting to show up to a meeting and someone ping you four minutes before and say that it was canceled because you probably could have been way more excited about using that time otherwise, but instead now you're going to go grab a quick snack or you're going to all these little around. paper cuts of time where it's not really, yeah, it's not, it's not, not actually that useful, you know, and you could have actually reallocated that entirely. So on the energy side, I think looking at the recurrings is super useful. Um, yeah, I, I, I encourage anyone to try this. I mean, I think a time audit and an energy audit is something we could all do more frequently. Um, but I found it super useful in helping me better prioritize the time I'm spending on a go forward basis towards the things that I care about.